I had the pleasure of interviewing with Elaine, who is an award-winning mystery author, as well as a newspaper woman and occasional TV personality. Here she is. Um, I'm fascinated by so-called ordinary people and how they live their day-to-day -day lives. Uh, I am not sympathetic with the rich. I don't really like them. I think that they get too much for their privilege. But to me, the real heroes and the hardest job to do is to go on day after day doing the job a, a, a work you may not like very much, taking care of your family, knowing that there's not much hope that things are going to change in your life, but you still lead a good life. And to me, that's the hardest thing that you can do. And, you know, a lot of my stories are about ordinary people, or they are ordinary people set against the power of the web. <laughs> There's still a lot of work to be done. Yes, they are given a chance to shine. They still do not make equal money. Uh, and they still, in many cases, do not are not taken as seriously. Um, I've written cozy mysteries, and uh, many cozy writers, female, do not make what male mystery writers make. Uh, and her covers are cutesy. They look almost like children's covers. Uh, sometimes that sells books, but sometimes they're just relegated to a spot in uh, in, in in the genre, genre, and it's hard to get out of. Um, and I fought very hard to write more serious mysteries, and that's what I'm doing now. And I really like my covers with my publisher. Uh, this is the latest. And to me, that cover for Death Grip is equal to any cover that a man's book would have. Um, but no, I belong to Sisters in Crime. And Sisters in Crime is a, a group of men and women who want equality uh, for women writers. Uh, and it hasn't yet reached that. It's improving, but it's not there yet. Yes. My most recent release is called Death Grip, and it's an Angela Richmond death investigator mystery. And in this particular one, uh, Angela it finds uh, a, a death investigator, by the way, is someone, it's, it's a new profession. It started about 1978. And there was a shortage in St. Louis, of all things, uh, for... Uh, medical examiners to go out to the scene. So they created this profession where they trained people who were not doctors to act on behalf of the medical examiner's office. And that's what a death investigator go does. They go out to the scene and they are in charge of the body. So Angela Richmond is the death investigator in my book. And she it works out of Shoto County, which is a mythical county, very much based on the richer parts of St. Louis County. And in this particular book, uh, a hiker in the woods has stumbled upon the body of a dead young woman. And the woman had disappeared about eight months ago. And there's a, then they discover three more of these bodies in the same spot. And there's a clue left behind that we know that the killer is an extremely wealthy and powerful man who has an excellent cover. He's a society type. He dates beautiful women. No one would ever believe it was him. And he is guarded by armies of lawyers. So it's up to Angela and the police officer in there to break through and find the clues to bring this man uh to justice and to get justice for these dead women. That's all. Um, I did have a, I had a primetime television show in St. Louis it, back in the late 80s, early 90s. And it was fun and I enjoyed it. But television, it takes 
something out of you. Uh, I got tired of always examining myself when I was doing an interview to see if my hair was right and my clothes looked right. And it, it got away, it took away from the story. And I finally realized it was time to get out of TV when I found myself, there was an interview and I said, no, no, don't use that shot. I've got a double chin. And, you know, that's ridiculous. It was time for me to get out. And also, TV is incredibly personal. Uh, people feel because you've been in their living room that they know you. And so my husband and I could not go out to dinner in St. Louis without someone coming up to me and going, Hi, Elaine, I wanted to talk to you about your show on Tuesday night. And then they would sit down at the table. And it, it had to stop. Uh, I enjoyed what television I did, but it was really time to end it for my sanity. I mean, what little I have. I was thrilled when Crippen and Landrew asked if they could do a collection of my short stories, which is called Deal with the Devil and 13 Short Stories. Uh, and because Crippen and Landrew has published some of the people that I consider the old gods of mystery writing. Um, and to be in this company was just amazing for me. And I enjoy doing short stories. Short stories to me are ways to test things out. And many of them are based on things that happened to me and are sort of twisted. The title story of Deal with the Devil is about one time I went to a drive-in uh, bank in Florida, so it's really, really hot. And I drive uh, an 86 Jaguar, which is the second love of my life after my husband. And I'm in line, and there's a guy next to me, and he's got an 86 Mercedes. And he's a big, fat guy, and he's bald, and he's smoking a cigar. And uh, he looks over at me, and he says, nice car. And I said, thank you. And he says, uh, what do you want for it? And I said, what? And he said, what do you want for your car? And I said, it's not for sale. And he said, uh, you live around here? And I said, yeah. And he says, uh, what, what about your house? And I said, that's not for sale either. And then, <laughs> so by that time, my, my, uh, receipt had arrived my transaction was over and I said I like your car and then he goes you're nice too and I drove out of there wondering what the heck I'd done you know mom says not to talk to strangers and here's this guy trying to buy everything um, and when I got home I told my husband and he said well you should have told him our house was a million bucks which by the way it's nowhere near that uh, but that incident stuck in my brain and eventually it became a short story because the guy was driving a red car a red convertible the top was down it was a hot day in florida so i figured he had to be the devil and that became the basis of my short story <laughs>